everybody. Welcome to church. Great to see you here today. I want to welcome all those that are joining us right now online. Welcome, everybody. Um, I wanted to give you a couple updates before we jump into the message today. And the first one is, many of you know a couple months ago, we did our church health survey, which was called CHAT. I just want to give you a real quick update on that. Um, we had a great response from our congregation. And what it did, it, it, it showed us how we were doing with uh, the 10 traits of healthy church. And as we worked through the results with uh, our coach that was assigned to us, man, we were just really thrilled and we're just really thankful to the Lord that, um, you know, that what we found out is that we are moving in the right direction and there's no major, you know, issues of, uh, you know, anything to be alarmed about as far as unhealth. But we definitely learned from this survey by listening to all of you that there um, are things that we are doing well and things that we definitely want to work on doing better so we can be the best Cornerstone Chapel that we can be. So we actually provided all the results for you at cornerstonechapel.org slash chat. If you want to go on there, you can see all the pie charts and bar graphs and, and all the results, and it's really cool stuff. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight um, what the results were for our top three strengths and our top three areas where um, we can uh, improve on. And they are this. Top three strengths according to uh, your results. The congregation said um, this trait of uh, God-exalting worship was the top strength. Uh, God's empowering presence was second and outward focus. What that means is uh, you told us that you believe one of our strengths is our worship, uh, depending on the Holy Spirit and his presence in our life, and just having an outward focus outside the four walls of this sanctuary. Then the leaders uh, said almost the same thing, but their top three from the leaders were God-exalting worship, wise administration and accountability, how we're being as stewards with our finances and, and all the resources that God has given us, and outward focus. So we praise God that, that God has confirmed this and showed us that, you know, where we're being faithful, where we're being strong, we want to continue to do this. So thank you for that feedback. And then the top three areas um, of improvement, the congregation said networking with the body of Christ was the first one. And that's just how well we're rubbing shoulders with um, people outside of Cornerstone Chapel. And the second one was actually a tie between loving and caring relationships and servant leader development. Just so basically what that means is how we're doing life together and how we're raising up leaders and, and serving God. And then the, uh, the last one was God's empowering presence. And then the leader said almost the same thing, almost identical. But the leader said, networking with the body of Christ, loving and caring relationships, and servant leader development. So we just want to just give a shout out to you and thank you for giving us this feedback. And we take it seriously. And we as a staff and council and elders are, have already met. We will continue to meet and just how we can prayerfully just be the best church that we can be to um, be lovers of God, minister to our congregation, and make a difference outside these four walls. Amen to that, church. So thank you so much for that. The second update I want to give you is next Sunday is our summer outdoor service. It's next Sunday we are going to have one service outside at 11 o'clock. And I just want to encourage you, man, don't take next Sunday off. Don't say, oh, well, it's outside, so I'm not going to come. Or, oh, it's different, so I'm not going to come. Or just one service, I'm not going to come. Man, we just want to encourage you to come and hang out together as uh, our, our larger church family as a whole. Because this is uh, one of those times throughout the year that our 9 o'clockers, can hang out with the 11 o'clockers, amen? And that's just a good time for us to, to be together as a church. And so we want to encourage you to come next week 
and we're going to be out in the grassy field. We're going to worship God. We're going to have lyrics for you on paper, and, and uh, we're going to receive our offering like we always do. We're going to give a brief message, and we're going to have water baptism outside. And after we're all done, we're just going to hang out together and just be together. We're going to eat lunch together. And, you know, the, the chat just told us that we can improve on loving and caring relationships. I think this is a perfect opportunity not to be in a rush to go home, but just spend some time loving and caring for each other. So I want to encourage you to do that. So the weather is supposed to be nice in the 70s and just bring a chair and maybe bring an umbrella and easy up if you want shade. And if you don't have that stuff, we'll, we'll have some chairs and shade for you. And, and you can bring your lunch, but I really encourage you just, uh, you can buy one of our box lunches today and we'll have lunch all ready for you. Um, next Sunday, and all the proceeds go to the Akron Dream Center. So that's just a win-win. So hope to see you next week back. But hey, today we're in week number six of our relationship series called Uncommon. Uncommon. We've been talking about great relationships are possible, but they're not probable if we're going to go about them the world's way, or what we've been calling the common way. But God has showed us in his word how we can do relationships his way or the uncommon way. So if you've missed any of these messages, I highly recommend that you jump on our website and just catch up, watch any, any of the ones that you've missed. Here's why. Not because I need more people to listen to me, because God is using this series in an incredible way. God is using these messages to really... Um, get into people's lives and show us where we might be doing things not God's way, that we can make adjustments in our life to do it his way. I, I've had singles come up to me and say, man, the, 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 this series is like rocking my world. I want to do it God's way. We've had couples come up to us um, that are not in major crisis, but I so appreciate them because they're noticing little issues that could turn into something bigger, and they're saying, we want to nip this in the bud right now. Can we talk this through with you? Can we get with you? Man, I'm so proud of them for that. And then we have had couples that are facing major crisis, and I'm proud of them because they, they are making the choice to whatever happened that's in the past and move forward together with God. So, man, God is moving in those ways, but I think an unbelievably amazing way that God is moving. I, I just can't wait to share this with you. Are you ready for this? How God has been using this series, and I just give all the thanks to him. But a couple weeks ago we did a message on marriage, and then we followed it up with a marriage on singles. And, I mean, it was pretty like, like we didn't hold back. I mean, we, re we really preached the truth in love. And I, I just believe that God really used that to minister to some people. And this past week, we got three um, calls from three different couples. Th these couples didn't even know the other couples were doing this. But we had messages from three different couples in our church. And to honor them, of course, I'm going to keep this confidential. But I want to say this to show you how God is moving in, in our church. We had three messages this week from three couples saying, um, you know what we are realizing through this series is that we need to get married. They were either living together or the sexual temptation was, was like they knew if they stayed in, in the relationship how it was, that you know it was um, compromising. And so God has used the preaching and the teaching of the word of God and with his Holy Spirit causing people to receive the truth and say, you know what, watch this, where my life is not lined up with the word, I want to line my life up with God and do it his way. Amen? I'm telling you, yes, we need to give praise to God. And I'm telling you, church, we need to see that as the Holy Spirit moving in our midst. Okay, because sometimes we can put God in a box and say, well, God only moves like if it's this way. We do that with our lives. Like, you know, God's only moving in my life if he's answering this prayer. He's only moving in my family if, if my kids do this. Or he's only moving in my church if I see this particular gift. 
And what God is saying is that God's big and God can move in all kinds of different ways. Amen? And so we need to realize that and recognize that. And when we see it, just give all the praise to him. Amen? So I wanted to spend a few minutes just sharing that with you to encourage you that God is moving. Amen. Well, today we're going to bring a message called Uncommon Forgiveness. Uncommon Forgiveness. And if there's anything that we need to make sure that we are um, practicing in our relationships to do it God's way is forgiveness. And so I want to kick this off kind of in a funny way, break the ice a little bit. But I want to show you some bulletin bloopers. These were actual um, announcements in bulletins, not our church bulletin, but some other church bulletins. Here's the first one, and it says, at the evening service tonight, the sermon topic will be, what is hell? Come early and listen to our choir practice. I don't really think they thought that through real good. Here's another one. These are, these are real announcements. The choir invites any members of the congregation who enjoy sinning to join the choir. That is a typo. Okay, right here, it should be singing, not sinning, singing, not sinning. Yeah. So, like, sometimes things are just not thought through. Sometimes it's a typo. But guess what? No matter what it is, we can all laugh. You know why we can all laugh today? Because we're not the topic of the joke, right? It, 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 it's not personal, right? So we can all laugh. I think it's hilarious. But the reason we laugh is because it's someone else. But you know what happens is when we are the target of something, of a mess up, of a sin, um, somebody said something to us. Uh, somebody had a, a real hurtful action or decision and it affects us, then who's laughing? You know, we don't laugh very much. Sometimes we fall into the pattern of how the world responds to things like that. And here's some ways that that, that happens. When people mess up against us, sin against us, sometimes we allow unforgiveness to settle in, bitterness, we allow grudges, resentment, anger, hatred, hurt, and offense. Man, this is so easy for it to creep into our life because of what was said, what was done. But see, God has a completely different way, and it's forgiveness. It's to release the bitterness, release the grudges and the resentment, to not hold on to the anger. Completely different way. Sometimes makes no sense logically. Do you, ever, do you ever start to notice like a lot of things God calls us to do, they don't make sense in our logic. God's ways are higher than our ways, right? And one way that God's way is higher than our ways is forgiveness. The Bible says in Colossians, be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges, bitterness, resentment, anger, hurt, offense. Never hold on to that stuff. Remember, here's why. The Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. I want to take a minute and, and read through an amazing story in the Gospels that Jesus shared. And we've mentioned it before, but we've never taken the time to read it in its entirety. And today I want to do that. And it's found in Matthew 18, and it's titled the, the Story of the Unmerciful Servant. And in Matthew 18, Jesus tells this story, and he says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him, watch this, 10,000 bags of gold, which is equivalent to about 20 years worth of salary. Well, this person was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him. Watch this, canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant then went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 
a hundred silver coins, the equivalent of about three months of salary. See the difference? 20 years of salary, three months of salary. A little out of balance there. But this servant says he grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. He did the same thing that the other servant did, fell to his knees and begged, asked for patience. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt, 20 years worth salary of debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on the fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Remember that. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. What an amazing illustration that Jesus shares here. And when I read through this story, I really see like three big takeaways that we can learn just right off the bat from looking at this story. The first one is this. It's not in your notes, but follow along with me. I think when you read this, you be, we can begin to understand our, our debt. Our debt. What do I mean by that? When Jesus was telling this story, he was trying to teach us. When he said, the one servant owed 10,000 bags of gold, which was 20 years of salary. Basically what he was trying to say was, an enormous, unthinkable, no way you could ever pay that back. That's basically what Jesus was saying. He was just trying to come up with this humongous, like, this is a huge debt. Unthinkable to pay it off. And then when when the servant came, it says that the king, this person, this manager, this king, he, he just canceled the debt. Then that same servant who had his debt canceled went out and found someone that owed him not not nearly as as much as this other one. And he doesn't cancel that debt for him. He doesn't forgive. And what Jesus is trying to show us, he wants us to understand our debt of sin. When, when we came into this world and we have sin and we continue to sin and the Bible says that the, 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 the debt of sin that we have is enormous, so enormous that our good works can't erase it. There's nothing we can do about it. And, and he wants to show us that the debt that we owe because of our sin will always, always, always be greater than anything anybody else could ever do to us. So he wants us to realize the, the enormous debt that we, we had. And then he wants us to understand our pardon, that, that Jesus did something about this unpayable debt that we can never pay off, that, that he pardoned us of this, of this thing that we had. And he wants us to realize what Jesus has done for us. And then he wants us to understand our consequence if we then go and then don't forgive others when they sin against us. Did you notice in the story the servant who didn't forgive? Where did he eventually end up in the story? He was put in jail, in prison. Did you catch that? What's Jesus trying to show us? He's trying to get us to understand That when we choose unforgiveness, you know where it's going to lead us? In a spiritual prison. We are the ones that are imprisoned when we choose not to forgive. An amazing, amazing story. So let's talk about this today. Let's talk about how we can walk in uncommon forgiveness. That that we can do this thing God's way. That we can really learn what God's trying to share with us today. So let's... uh, Let's talk about what forgiveness is. What forgiveness is. In your notes, forgiveness is four things. First of all, it's a choice. That's where it all starts. It, it's a choice of our own free will. That when somebody sins against us, when somebody wrongs us, we choose to pardon them, to pardon what they did, to not hold that against them, to cancel that debt. To make that choice. That's where it all begins. And you might be, you might be thinking, dude, like, like, 
but I don't feel like that. And I'm thinking some, like, like, like some, some crazy things. Like, that just doesn't make sense. Listen, we, I want you to know that we are going to have certain emotions flooding our heart that are going to make you feel to do everything else but forgive. You're going to have thoughts be going through your head that are going to try to tell you to do, do anything. Just don't forgive. You're not ready. You can't. They made you feel this way. They did this. But forgiveness starts with a choice. It starts with choosing to do the right thing regardless of feelings and things. Now, I'm going to get to the feelings and things in a moment, but forgiveness is a choice. It's in my control to forgive others, to forgive my enemies, to forgive God. Sometimes we're mad at God and to forgive ourselves. Secondly, forgiveness is a process. Okay, now we can talk about how sometimes the emotions and the thoughts kick in. It all starts with a choice, but forgiveness is also a process because depending on what certain people have done to us, depending on things that have happened in our life, it could be a very tough process. Our emotions are are, 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 are you know, just all over the place. Our, our, our thoughts, we're thinking all these things. And that's where sometimes every day we just have to go back to that choice that we made. You know what? I choose to forgive today. The next day you wake up and feelings and thoughts are really getting you down. Lord, I choose to forgive. I'm in a process here. I need to stay on track because of what happened. It's going to take time for my emotions and my thoughts to catch up to this. But I'm going to lead with my decision, not lead with my feelings and thinking. you got to lead with your decision, not your feelings and your thinking. Amen? Lead with your decision. It's what keeps you right with God. Forgiveness is letting go. Letting go of what? Letting go of bitterness. Say, God, I'm not going to hold on to the grudge. I'm not going to hold on to the resentment. I'm not going to hang on to that stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that go. I choose to let that go. I choose to forgive, and I also choose to let that stuff go, the hurt and the offense. Forgiveness is also agreeing to move forward. What does this mean? Well, it means that despite the consequences, despite you know, certain things that have happened, I'm going to agree to put that in my past. It is a part of my, my life. It is a part of my past, but I'm not going to live in the past. I want to agree to move forward. I'm, going to, I'm not going to live life looking in the rearview mirror all the time. I'm going to put that in the past and press forward to what God has in front of me. That means I'm not always going to throw that back in their face. A husband and wife, you know, you've forgiven them of something, and then next, you know, the, a year later, you know, you're, you get riled up and, and you throw that in, in their face again. Now, sometimes, sometimes you need to have a healthy conversation to talk things through, but you know what I mean when you, when you use it as a punishment to throw that back in someone's life. Um, to, we we want to agree to move forward by taking the high road. There's this quote that I love. It says, you're never more like God than when you forgive. There's a lot of things we can do to be like God, but you're never more like God than when you choose to walk in forgiveness. It's the single most important practice that a Christian could do. It's one of the greatest evidences of walking in love when we can do that. We'll talk about what forgiveness is not. Four things. Forgiveness is not condoning what somebody did. Like if you forgive somebody and they did something that was really hurtful to you, it's not condoning what they did. It's not saying it's okay that they did that. It's not even minimizing or ignoring what they did. Some, some of us have walked through some pretty hurtful, harsh, difficult situations. And I just want to say this over some of you today. Some of the things that have happened, God's heart breaks over that as well. And God loves you. And when you forgive, it doesn't condone what they did. It's still wrong. But God's calling us to walk in forgiveness. Forgetting. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Some things will never be forgotten. But see, God doesn't even forget. Okay? Here's what God does. God's all-knowing. So God 
knows what we've done and what we're going to do, but God doesn't hold it against us. And that's what we mean by we may remember certain things people have done, but when we choose to forgive and move forward, we're not going to hold that against that person. Forgiveness is not conditional. And this, this is an important one because sometimes we're making these negotiations to say, well, I'll forgive when this happens. I'll forgive when I feel like it. I'll forgive when they apologize. I'll forgive when, when you know, justice happens. Or I'll forgive. And, and forgiveness is never conditional. Never conditional. Forgiveness is a choice that we make based not on our feelings, not on our thinking, but based on it's the right thing to do because that's what Jesus did to us. And lastly, forgiveness is not removal of the consequences. It just doesn't automatically remove you know, some of the things that are consequential because of those actions. Meaning this, when you choose to forgive somebody, you know, it, it doesn't mean that the relationship may be exactly how it was. Depending on what happened, you may have to set some, some different boundaries. You may have to walk through a season where you need to regain trust. Okay, so it doesn't remove consequences, but it helps you walk through those consequences in a healthy way. Sometimes people need to walk through a period of healing. And so it's so important for us to understand what forgiveness really is. And what forgiveness is not. Because I'm telling you, the enemy loves to come in and cause confusion on this. And the Bible says in Ephesians, in your anger, do not sin. You know what this is saying? It's saying we're going to have situations when people sin against us. When people mess up, when they make mistakes. So in your anger, do not sin. Meaning this, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Meaning this. Make sure that you are walking through this process of forgiveness, making that choice every day to do that. Because here's what will happen if we don't. Because when we do allow anger and unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment to stay in our heart, it says that we give the devil a foothold. It says when we don't let the sun go down on our anger, we don't give the devil a foothold. Or what that means is, when we deal with stuff how we're called to deal with it, we're not letting the enemy have open doors into our life. We're not letting the enemy have opportunities to have, to, to have areas of our heart. He's trespassing. You know, and many times because of our unforgiveness, we're opening the door for him to trespass into our mind and in our heart. And so... What I want to do is I want to spend the rest of our time today and I want to give you five steps to uncommon forgiveness. I want, to, I want us to walk through this. I want us to, to learn it, to know it, to grasp it. Like, if all this is true, okay, then, then how do I do this? How do I walk in uncommon forgiveness? How, how can I do this? I'm going to give you five things. In your notes, follow along with me. The first one is this. Choose to forgive. It all starts with a choice. I'm hearing the truth of God's word. I'm hearing what Jesus did for me, and I am choosing to forgive. The Bible says this in Matthew 6. It says, if you forgive those who sin against you, or if you choose to forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will will not forgive your sins. So what this is saying is it all starts with a choice. And again, I get it. I get it. I, I understand like, like the struggle with our emotions and our thoughts and, and sometimes what other people are saying. And it's this warfare inside of us that is trying to, trying to get us to do anything but the right thing. But the Bible says that we can make the choice regardless of how we feel, how we think. God validates how you feel. He cares about how you feel. He cares about what you're thinking. But he's saying, don't miss the opportunity to do the right thing because of how you're thinking or feeling. Amen? He cares about everything about you. He does. But you know what? Here's the thing. He cares 
about you so much that he's willing to challenge you, to ask you, to do something that may be hard because he loves you enough that he wants you to be free. Amen? Because see, all this stuff about forgiveness and forgiveness and unforgiveness, you know, sometimes it can make us feel a certain way. And God's not giving us this message today so that we're hanging our heads saying, oh my gosh, you know, all the ways I've been wronged and I'm still harboring all this stuff. He's not trying to make us feel bad. He's trying to tell us how we can be free and we can have freedom and joy in our life, church. And it starts by making that choice. We just got to make that choice. Be obedient. It might be kicking and screaming, but it's a choice. We can't listen to, the, to Satan, you know, whispering in our ear. We, we can't listen to culture. I mean, man, if you watch TV or just look at what's going on in the world, I mean, there's not a whole lot of forgiveness going on in the world right now. You know? And sometimes we can be influenced by the enemy lying to us and culture and maybe what other people are saying. You know, oh, you shouldn't do that. Or, and sometimes we start to think, oh, man, I, I'm just not ready. I can't do that. It's too hard. Man, that's the enemy lying to you. Yeah, you, it, it might be a process to work through those feelings and thinking, but you can make the choice. You can do it. You can, it, all, it starts with that choice. The next thing is this. Speak or write my forgiveness. Speak it out. Speak it out before God. Or write it down. Speak it. The Bible says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus said it. He spoke it. There's something powerful. There's something that holds us accountable. There's something of making a commitment when we speak our forgiveness before God. To say this, okay, I'm going to make this choice in my heart. What's next? Speak it out. Lord God, I forgive. I forgive them. I forgive them for what they did. And some, some people might be saying here today, man, I just don't know if I can do that. You don't understand what they did. Look, 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 just for a second, just for a second. Just put the feelings on the back burner. Just for a second, put the thinkings on the back burner. And here's what, you know, you know what you do? Don't worry about them for a second. Don't worry about the person that offended you for one minute. You know what you do? Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus Christ and what he did. Focus on the great debt that we had of sin and what he did for us, that he died on the cross. Just focus on Jesus right now. And I'm telling you, when you focus on Jesus and what he did for you, I'm telling you, I encourage you, you can do it. You can do it. You can make that choice. You can speak that out. You can speak that truth out. You know what? After service today, we have some resources for you if you'd like. There's these white pieces of paper here on the corners of the, of the altar here. And it's just a way that you could write this down. You can, you can write, Lord, today I choose to forgive. And, and you write you know, names or what they did. And for some of you, Maybe this doesn't apply, but for some of you, this might be really helpful to you, for you to walk through some stuff that you're dealing with. So I want to encourage you to pick that up today. Number three, look at this. Number three is ask God, ask God to forgive me. Ask God, to, I'm sorry, ask God to heal me. Ask God to heal me. This is so important because this is where we start to deal with some of the emotions, some of the thoughts that are going through our mind. Remember I said put it on the back burner for a second? Choose to forgive and speak it out? Well, now we want to ask God to heal us in our hearts. We can say, God, I choose to forgive, and tomorrow I'm going to choose to forgive, and I refuse to hold on to unforgiveness in my life. I speak that to you, Lord. I make that commitment. But God, I'm feeling this way. Man, my thoughts are just bombarded with this and that. God, would you do a work in my life? Would you heal me? Would you minister to me? Would you help me? And many times, the healing is a process as well. It takes time for, for God's word and God's truth and God's presence and his healing just to sink in and heal those wounded, broken places of our heart. But it's so important that we go there. Don't think it's just going to automatically happen. 
We have to ask God to heal us and go in that process. The Bible says in Hebrews, Watch out that no bitterness takes root among you, for as it springs up, it causes deep trouble. Look at this, hurting many in their spiritual lives. You know what this verse is saying? When we choose not to forgive, but choose to hold on to unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, and anger, that what it does is that it's hurtful to us and it starts to seep in to the people around us. That's what bitterness does. Sometimes we think that when we're holding on to unforgiveness, we're punishing our offender. That's not the case. We're not. When we're holding on to unforgiveness, it hurts us. It hurts us. That's why God wants us to do this, because he wants us to be free. Holding on to bitterness is like drinking poison and thinking it's going to affect someone else. It doesn't, it doesn't work. The next one is this, number four, pursue reconciliation. What's the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation? Forgiveness takes one. It's me making the choice to forgive those who have offended me before God. I may or may not ever talk to that person. It's my forgiveness. It's me choosing to forgive. It's between me and God. It's being right with God because I'm doing the right thing. Reconciliation takes two. It's the restoration of a relationship that has been broken. Forgiveness is first and foremost. After you walk through forgiveness, you want to be open to God reconciling and restoring a relationship that's been hurt and broken. That's why it says pursue reconciliation. Be open to that. Be open to that. In Matthew, it says, if you're offering your gift at the altar and remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. You know what this verse is saying? It's like we can almost conclude that God values reconciliation as much as or even more than our worship. I mean, he's like really serious about us having healthy, restored, reconciled relationships. And so here's a tool that you could use when God is leading you to maybe talk some things through with somebody, to reconcile. It's called the five languages of an apology. If you're a note taker and you're writing this down and you don't get all this, this will be on our Facebook page today. But I want to go through this and these are, these are phrases we want to say when we're reconciling with somebody. Maybe it's a, a, a rift between a husband and wife. Maybe it's something between a parent and a child. Maybe it's a coworker. But these are, these are how you can, in a healthy way, talk through reconciliation. The first one is feel bad, like express sorrow. Did you ever talk to somebody and, like, you were hurt, but it, they're acting like, well, I don't know, it's no big deal, like, they, like they don't care? Like, so when you're, when you're two people getting together trying to reconcile, both should try to express or put themselves in the other person's shoes and express, like, to feel bad for, for the offense, to feel bad for what happened. The next one is admit your fault, to own it. And some of us, this is real hard for us to do because of our pride. We never want to take responsibility or admit. And, and maybe there's really nothing or not much you did in that situation, but it's always good to have that language to say, if there's anything I did. You could always say that. If I've, if I've hurt you, if any, I just want to take responsibility. I just want to own my part. Third one, promise to change. Say, man, I just want to grow in this area. I, I want us to, I just want to talk, I just want us to talk nicer to one another. I, I just want to have a stronger relationship. Man, I promise to do better in that area. Fourth is make it right. You could say, man, how can we make this right? How can I make it up to you? And lastly, ask for forgiveness. Ask to say, man, would you, would you forgive me for this? Now, when you're having conversation like that, that's healthy stuff. That's healthy stuff. And here's some ways we can respond when, when some of this language is happening. There's responding to apology. These are some good things to say when someone says, I, will you forgive me? Like, like say, well, yes, I forgive you. <laughs> That's a good thing to say. I love you. Or here's one too. I'm sorry too. It's just real good to have healthy conversations and reconciliation. Last but not least, number five. How can we have uncommon forgiveness? Choose to forgive. 
Speak it out. Ask God to heal us. Pursue reconciliation and always forgive. Always forgive. What does this mean? It means this is something we're always going to have to walk through. With, as long as there's people on the planet, come on. As long as there's people on the planet, we're going to have to be people of forgiveness. That it's a lifestyle. That we just know it's the right thing to do. The Bible says in Matthew, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Peter says, up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times, or 70 times seven, or 490, or basically what Jesus was saying was, you don't keep track. I mean, it's not literally 490. It's to forgive like Jesus forgave. Can you guys just imagine what it would be like if we in our lifetime asked Jesus to forgive us 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, 400 times, 480 times, 489 times. You're like, oh my gosh, I've used up 489 times. I only have one more time to ask Jesus to forgive me. Now you're chuckling because that's ridiculous, right? Jesus is always going to forgive us. He doesn't keep track. There is no 489th time. It's unending with Jesus, right? That's what he's saying. He's saying, don't keep track. Just make it a lifestyle. Look, look, here, here. Forgive them like you want me to forgive you, Jesus says. He's like, you want me to forgive you? Then forgive. And church, that's God's word to us today. Great relationships are possible if we do it his way. And today, we want to walk this out in kind of a different way today. On our altar here today, we have a bunch of post-it notes and pens. And underneath the screens, you can see where first service already walked through this. But I challenged our church today that today's message would not just be something we hear and leave and don't apply to our life. But we want to be doers of the word and not just hear. So I said, let's put this into practice today. We've learned what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not. But let's today, let's make the choice today to speak our forgiveness to anyone that has wronged us, that you know it's still in your heart. You know you, you're thinking about it right now or it tends to come up in conversation or when you see them or see their name, they're like, Ugh. Maybe it's an enemy. Maybe you need to forgive God today. Maybe you need to forgive you. And so today what we challenged is, you can do it from your seat. You can do it anywhere. Because you'll probably have to do more in the future. So you don't always have to be in this building to do it. But today we just thought it would be cool that we as a church could just have a visual of how powerful this is to say, God, I'm forgiven today. I'm putting it on the wall, and I want to move forward in you, Lord. And so if you want to do that, as we begin to worship, I'm just going to ask you to come up and get one of these post-it notes, and you might just want to say, I choose to walk in uncommon forgiveness today, Lord, and, and, and I need to forgive you, God, and just write God on that paper because some of us are bitter at God. And some of us need to put me, me, I, I just can't get over what I did and I, I, I keep being hard on myself and blaming myself and I just can't seem to forgive me. That thing I did five years ago, I just keep blaming me and I can't forgive me and so today I'm gonna forgive me. And some of you need to forgive others and if that's the case, just maybe put initials. Just come up and put Initials that represent certain people that you want to forgive today. Remember, God cares about how you feel. He cares about what you're thinking, but make the choice. Let God heal your feelings. Let God change your thoughts. 
make the choice to forgive today. It only sets you free. It's, it's for you. You're only gonna be as free as your level of forgiveness. Amen? Think about that. You're only as free as your level of forgiveness. So let's pray.